Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Toyota Highlander, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. So one thing I do like about this hitch is that for the most part it's going to be completely hidden. The receiver tube is going to stick out a little bit, but it's still going to be less noticeable than some of the other hitches available. Now one benefit to the hitch coming out a little ways is that it's going to work really well for those folding accessories. And that's because it's going to give us a little bit more clearance. So when we do go to use any folding accessories like a bike rack, cargo carrier, whatever you might have, you're going to have more than enough room to put it in that upright position and know that it's going to work correctly. With these Highlanders being really versatile SUVs, you're going to be able to use them to do a little bit of everything. And so I personally would want a hitch to match those demands. And I think this one will do that perfectly. We already kind of talked about it working good with those folding accessories, but it's also going to work really good for towing. And that's because it is a class three. So it's going to be a little more heavy duty. It's going to have those weight capacities that we need to tow our trailer down the road safely. As far as the maximum gross tongue weight rating goes, that's going to be 500 pounds. So that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So if you are using any accessories with that high of a weight capacity, you shouldn't have any issues using whatever size bike rack or cargo carrier that you would want to. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 5,000 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do personally recommend, it's never a bad idea to check with your Highlander's owner's manual to make sure your Toyota can pull out much weight safely. But if you do plan on doing some towing, I would recommend that you pick up some trailer wiring. That way the lights on your trailer will work and you'll be safe and legal as you go down the road. Now with that being said, if we come over to our hitch, it is a class three. So it's gonna have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, super common size and ton of different accessories available for this size hitch. It's gonna have a reinforced collar for extra strength. And I think it looks pretty good too. Kind of gives it a more complete or finished look in my opinion. It's gonna have that standard 5 8 pen hole. Uh, keep in mind, a pen and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can pick it up here at eTrailer. And we're gonna have loop style safety chain openings, which are nice and thick. And so these would give me peace of mind knowing that my backup connection for my trailer is really reliable. And they're gonna be big enough too to use just about any size hook that you might have. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you're gonna use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be right at about 17 inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are pretty good. You're gonna to need to get a ball mount with a very slight rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole, to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be right at about one inch. And you're gonna use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. But at the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. It's gonna be able to handle just about anything you throw at it, and it's really not gonna spoil the looks of the back of your Highlander either. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Shouldn't take you a whole lot of time. Everything's relatively easy to get to. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Highlander. And over here on the driver's side, we're gonna to need to remove this plastic underbody panel. So to get our panel off, we're gonna have a few different types of fasteners that we need to remove. We're gonna have two pushpin style fasteners, one here and one here. To get them out, you can use a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver, pry underneath the head of it and work that fastener completely out. That same technique for this one here. And once we have them out of the way, we're going to have, looks like three 10 millimeter screws. So I'll grab my socket and zip them up. And then if you kind of work up along this edge and next to your spare tire a little bit, we're going to have two 
plastic nuts that we're just gonna have to loosen up. These actually aren't gonna come off. They're gonna be attached to the panel, but we need to loosen them from the studs. You can usually do this by hand and with a 12 millimeter socket. If they just wanna kinda of keep spinning, sometimes you do have to put a little downward pressure on the panel. And this one actually just popped off, so that's okay. But once we have everything loose, we can grab our panel and work it out from underneath of our Highlander. Here in the center, we're gonna have two bumper tabs and we're gonna have to loosen them up and they're gonna be held in place with a push pin saw fastener, just like the ones that held on our underbody panel. So we'll go ahead and pry them out, kind of bend the tabs down a little bit, just like that. On the passenger side, we're gonna have this little plastic deflector here that we do need to trim off some. That way we'll have room for the hitch. There's a measurement in your instructions and I just drew a line across to let me know where to cut. It is relatively thin plastic. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to cut it. You could use a pair of snips or something like that to do it as well. The passenger side, we're gonna have a tow hook here that we need to remove. It's gonna be held in place with two bolts. So I'll use a 17 millimeter socket to pull those out. We can just kind of set our tow hook out of the way. If we move a little bit further towards the front of our vehicle on the frame rail, we're gonna have this little metal bracket here that's attached to the frame rail. And we need to get this out of the way as well. So one of the bolts will be a 17 millimeter. And the other bolt that we'll need to take out will be a 10 millimeter. And once that's out of the way, on the frame rail, we're gonna have a couple of plugs and we need to pop them out, that way they don't interfere with our hitch. So real straightforward, you can use a screwdriver, trim tool, whatever you have. You simply just pop right out. Now here on the inside of our bumper, we're gonna have two plastic pushman fasteners and we're gonna pop them out. Then if we just work our way back over to our driver's side frame rail, again, we're gonna have some plugs in it that we need to pop out so they don't interfere with our hitch. Now we are gonna have to do a little bit more trimming. The two bumper tabs that we removed the push pins from earlier we're gonna have to cut these pretty far back, almost flush out of the way. That way the hitch has room to get up into position. So again, I'm just gonna use a Dremel tool, but you can always use a pair of snips or something like that. Now what we're gonna do is go over our attachment points that is going to hold our hitch up in place. And they're gonna be the same setup on each side of our Highlander. So we're gonna have a total of three attachment points. One here, here, and here. And those are factory weld nuts inside of the frame. And so I do suggest cleaning those threads out using a tube brush and some lubricant just to get out any dirt or debris that may be inside. And the hardware that we're gonna to use to secure the hitch up once we have it in place is a hex bolt and a conical tooth washer. Make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna face up towards the hitch. So once we have the hitch up there, we're simply just going to 
thread these in directly to the frame. Now with an extra set of hands, we can grab our hitch and raise it into position. We want to go up and over the tailpipe on the passenger side. You can hold it flat against your frame rail and you want to get at least one bolt started hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of them. With everything hand tight now, we can come back and snug it all down. Once we have everything snug, we can come in with a torque wrench and tighten our hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. So what we're gonna do now is trim out our underbody panel according to the diagram and the instructions. This is optional. You don't have to reinstall this panel if you don't want to, but in our case, we're gonna cut this out and put it back in place. So I just drew some lines here according to the instructions on where I need to cut. Now that our panel is cut, we can go ahead and reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on our 2015 Toyota Highlander.